Like, <laughs> should I say that again? I'm so sad about my go part. Yeah. Because it's brand new. But otherwise, every every animal's alive. <laughs> and this is the baby that died. Yeah. None of my rabbits even look like they got knocked off their stands. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, and our neighbor's houses are all standing without big trees at one time, as far as I can see. No. It's good. The neighbors next door had a little baby, and I was worried all night about them. <laughs> It is a strange mix of beauty and devastation out here. I think there might be a little damage to some of the rhododendrons or branches that fell on them. Yeah, but they'll be fine. They'll see it in the trim down and things that happen naturally in the forest. It'll be good to them. And it shouldn't take as long to get as big as they were no. the first time. We should make sure that quail aren't frozen. <laughs> yeah, let's say they're, they're out here in the front where it gets a little more wind. Those guys are all okay, but you probably have no water. Yeah, we'll have to uh, do the water water, water run. Can you go down any further? Oh, let's go back up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, put go. Nice. Yeah, we'll have to chip that out to be able to get in there. I'll come out here with a little hammer and we'll just break up the ice. several days, maybe a week, maybe weeks, I can't remember, but we didn't have any power, trees were falling down, and we all slept in our living room on sleeping bags and um, had the fire going, and I remember it as being great fun, but I know from <laughs> my dad's attitude about it that it wasn't great fun for him and my mom, and now I kind of know why. <laughs> <laughs> you really can't sleep because all, all you hear is things crashing or on around you and you're wondering what's going to hit you in the face <laughs> while you're asleep so it keeps waking you up thinking you know what, what damage is being done out there and listening for goats and Especially since neither Brian or I had sleep from the night before because the tree fell down and all this other stuff yesterday. So we were already just dead tired. Yeah. I'm going to go show the broken tree in the front yard. 
Wendy isn't too sad about this tree. It was the ugliest tree that we have around here. And now it is a shorter ugly tree. I predict the thing is still alive and will thrive. It'll just be, it'll just have to send out new branches. Wow, look at this electric fence. This one back up. I doubt it. It's one of the ones you were planning to lose, anyways, wasn't it? It was big enough. I wanted to keep it if possible. All those really small ones yeah. we were planning on taking out eventually. Well, we could try to push it up, and you could fence it. I don't think there's any way to prop it back up. <laughs> I, mean, I can imagine how heavy that would be. This, this is really amazing. We were, we were in this little temporary goat shelter observing and helping Valkyrie give birth last night when this tree came down. I'm glad it missed us, but it didn't miss us by much. What do you think, Wendy? <laughs> well, I remember when this stuff came down because I was in here by myself in the dark because the light had gone out by then and Brian was over he in here and this whole thing came down and I just <laughs> covered up all the baby goat stuff and hope nothing would crash on my head. <laughs> I could hear this thing over here and it made such a loud racket that it was, I thought for sure the trees up there were falling down. Yeah, we'll have to walk down there and see for ourselves. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. There's... It was leaning quite a bit yesterday, even. The bamboo in our backyard is weighted down by the snow and ice. It should be just fine. I'd like to get down there to show you a better angle on it, but it's just too steep of a slope and it's really slippery. So I just don't want to. I just don't want to do that right now. Us came down. Yeah. I am very thankful that this big tree didn't come down. Don't push on it. <laughs> it's an old one and very easily could have taken out a corner of our house. But you could say that about a lot of the trees around here.
big trees, three big trees in the porch. Look how their branches are all pointing at our house. And, uh, I think we're lucky it didn't come through our roof. I agree. It looks like Kathy and Randy just lost a bit of their gutter. And the chicken roof is yeah, panel. yeah, that was sagging already. I'm glad this really big branch fell behind our chicken coop rather than on top of it. It looks like it's big enough that it probably could have collapsed the roof in on our chickens. You can see how this uh, chicken run roof has protected about half of the chicken run from getting any snow and ice. That's just because uh, it only protects from rain coming straight down, not when it's really blowing hard and coming in into the chicken run. Fortunately, this largest branch just fell short of the house. It probably wasn't big enough to do too much damage even if it had hit the house, but it probably would have uh, messed up the gutter. This maple tree was not arched and bent like that before. This is just the weight of the ice. It's really quite beautiful right now. I just hope that the ice melts and the branch springs back. Rather than having the branch break off altogether. There are a lot of branches out here breaking off altogether. Behind me is the most serious damage so far from this ice and wind storm. A large cherry tree has come up by the roots and fallen on a brand new goat shed. I'm not sure how much it will cost to fix, but we've still got the number of the outfit that built this for us. And maybe, maybe this has happened to them before. Maybe they're, they have some way of coming out on site to do some repair work. We'll see. Rogue went and ran in both of the stalls and then did a little dance in the yard like she was celebrating that her house is still there. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Rogue. Yeah, I think, I think Indigo told her that it was going to fall down. <laughs> the branches are falling all over the place and Rogue keeps going outside and roaming around. <laughs> The rabbits are very cold hardy. 
they should be just fine as long as we can get them some liquid water to drink occasionally throughout the day. Here's what the damage to the goat shed looks like from the inside. Come on, Rogue. I don't want them in there. Come on, Rogue. Yep, yeah, come on. Yep. Yeah. You only took out a little tiny piece of the fence. When you were talking about the fence, I thought the whole fence got pushed over. Yeah. This is one of the largest trees that has been completely uprooted. Thank God it fell the direction it did rather than straight at our house. It looks like it just took out part of our privacy fence and damaged the neighbor's shed, but it looks like it, it missed damaging their house as well. But there's a lot of the tree over there in their backyard. Yeah. Definitely a lot of close calls out here with the trees just missing the houses and things that could have been a lot worse. We were a little worried with the uh, electric fence, a lot of it coming down and being pushed over by branches that it wouldn't contain our goats. But it looks like it just needed to be propped up in certain spots and where it is completely discombobulated, there's enough other debris that that's containing the goats. Our Mini Cooper mobile chicken coop seems to be the least affected of things around here. I don't really even see anything heavy on the top of it. Considering how much debris has been coming down around here, that's pretty surprising. There are some large branches down across this road, but it looks passable. The ice is so thick and slippery, I really don't want to try driving on it at all today or until it, it gets a little better. Yeah, you are a pretty goat.